Good afternoon everybody. Today we are going to be changing out the brake shoes or brake pads on the rear drum brakes of the little red Civic. So it's right here. I promise you it's not as bad as it looks. It looks quite over overwhelming with all of these springs and retainers and arms and everything. But I promise you it's not as bad as it looks. You just gotta take it step by step. So we'll walk you through that today. A little update on the car. I had the paint match rattle can. So I went and masked off all the OEM stickers and painted this up up and laid a layer of gloss on it clear coat so that looks wonderful next thing i cleaned up the air box put the air box back in in the battery tray i also cleaned up the tubs a little bit finally got around to painting this fuel rail so the engine bay is looking quite nice now so yeah we're just gonna go ahead and do this um i'm gonna show you step by step how to do it i gotta do the driver's side and the passenger side so let's get to it Alrighty, for this install, I'm not going to be using any specialized tools. They do make special tools to make it easier to pull springs and retainers out. However, a lot of people don't have access to those tools, so I'm just going to be using something you could find pretty much anywhere in any toolbox. So I have a couple pairs of vice grips. I have this needle nose type to get into the more smaller areas. You're going to need a screwdriver or some sort of pry tool that will just help get leverage on things. And then assorted pliers for pulling springs off. And then obviously you're gonna need your replacement parts. So here I have our brake shoes. You have the forward and rear brake shoes. And then you have your actual drum housing. We're pretty much replacing these guys, this guy and this guy right here. All right, so since the drum housing is actually off of the other side already, I already pulled it off. Um, I'm actually gonna show you on the passenger side. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off this actual drum housing. Uh, so normally if you knock it a little bit, you kind of wiggle it around, you could get it off. Uh, if that doesn't work, you could always go in with a hammer, give it a few knocks up top and up bottom, kind of jiggle it around. Uh, this one I already broke loose, so all I gotta do is kind of finagle it around and wiggle it until there's a little space there I could get my finger in and slide this guy off. And that'll actually expose our brake mechanism. I'm gonna go ahead and brake clean this. Uh, use degreaser, use brake parts cleaner and get all of this grimy brake dust off. I'm gonna hop over to the driver's side and start doing that side first. So let's go ahead, hop to the other side and let's get that done. All right, so getting started, step one is we're gonna take off this main spring right here uh, that connect the two brake shoes together. So the way to do that is you could grab your pliers or vice grips, depending how much grip you need on it, and they're just hooked into the brake shoe there and there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Alrighty, now that we got the main spring off, um, we're gonna go ahead and take out these here hold down clips. So on some cars, it's actually a circular spring and you would just press that in with vice grips and turn it 90 degrees to get it off of the pin. In this case, it's kind of like a leaf spring style. You're gonna press it down and rotate it 90 degrees so then it lines up with this here slot and then that should be able to free up our brake pads. Another good tip, is sometimes you could see the pin slides back and forth. So in the back here, right here, oh, right here on my finger, you could see the other end of that pin. So sometimes it's helpful to hold that in while you are depressing on the spring. That way the pin doesn't rotate and give you issues with sliding out that retention, that hold down spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my vice grips and pinch it around here and Push down and rotate. Here we go. Until I could get it off of that slot. There you go. And then you're gonna go ahead and push through and pull out that, that pin, that locking pin. Just comes out of the back like so. So as you can see, uh, it's just kind of like a T-shaped pin that slides in here and you press down the spring and it locks in. So you're just pressing down the spring that way you can rotate and pull it out. Same on the other side, there's one more here too. Here's the other one. Go ahead and pull out the pin. 
Alrighty, next step is we're going to try to free up our pads, our shoes. So this one's gonna slide out this way, and this one's gonna slide out down here, and you're just gonna unhook it from the spring. And this guy's gonna slide out here. So right here you have our self-adjustment. This has a ratchet on it and adapts the brake pad if your brake pads wear down so that it always has tension on the brakes and actually always work. So you're just gonna remember which side this goes on. The keyway goes on this side and the longer end goes on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and set that down. And like I said, our forward brake shoe just came out of this side. And then our right brake shoe comes out of this side. Now this is the handbrake or parking brake arm. There's just a little horseshoe clip here that we're just gonna pop off and then get it free from this handbrake arm. You wanna remember which side the handbrake arm attaches to. That way your handbrake works. This is just held in with a little horseshoe clip. We're just gonna slide that off and pull off the pad. If you're doing this on on any other car a lot of times the handbrake arm will come free just remember which side the spring is on so when you put it back on it attaches properly to the forward and rear shoes Alrighty, we have our e-brake arm separated from our rear shoe now. So as you can see, I kind of laid it out on the ground how it reassembles back into the drum. The brake system looks very overwhelming, but as long as you keep it all laid out and you take it step by step, it's actually not that complicated of an install. So now we are going to replace with our new forward and rear brake shoes, the springs, retainers, and clips are going to all transfer over. Now that everything is out of the drum, it's a great time to clean everything off with some brake cleaner. And I'm actually going to take these over to the grinder and get some of the rust off. That way we can reuse them and throw them back into this drum. Alrighty, now that all of our assembly hardware is nice, shiny, and clean, we can now start to reassemble. Reassembly is pretty simple. It's just the way we took it all apart, except now, since we're applying new parts, we're gonna go ahead and throw in some synthetic brake lube. This comes with the kit when you buy brakes most of the time, so you shouldn't have to worry about going out and buying this. So first thing we're gonna do is actually lube up the hub because that is what makes contact with the actual drum housing. So we're gonna lube up this, and then we're gonna lube up the adjustment screw, the auto adjustment screw, and then we are ready to start reassembling. All right, dude, like I was saying, we're just gonna go ahead and take our lube, and we're just kinda gonna dab up a little bit on this hub, kinda get a nice even coat, and then spread it in. Nice little gummy consistency. If you need a little bit more. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. Make sure you get in those little nooks and crannies. Next up, we have our auto adjustment screw. So we're gonna go ahead and throw a little dab on here, like so. And then we're just gonna go ahead and spread that around, get it up in those threads and such. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide that screw and zero it out back into the self-adjustment rod. Uh, something to note too is because it's ratcheting, these are actually negative threads. So instead of righty tighty lefty loosey, uh, you actually turn it to the left for it to tighten. Or I guess technically you would be turning this to the right, but you turn the actual screw to the left. So whatever makes sense to you. So we're gonna go ahead and close this all the way down and zero it out since we are putting fresh brake pads in. All right, there you go. You wanna keep it a little loose. Then obviously the other end goes on here. Now for assembly, we're pretty much just gonna take all of the little pieces from the old shoes and transfer them over to the new shoes. So right here, we have our little spring on this side that's just gonna slide out and unhook. And then it's gonna go on the exact same part here and hook on there. And then off of our old reverse brake shoe, we have the e-brake. So that's gonna go ahead and slide in on this hole. This one has a little lip up here, so you just kind of got to get it under the lip first and then give it a little bit of twist and you should be able to get it in there pretty easily. Handbrake arm is now in. We're just going to lock it in with that same little horseshoe clip. Um, mine's a little bent out of whack, but don't worry, I'll slide it on and then bend it back so it gets locked in there. Alrighty, now that our rear brake shoe is assembled to the handbrake arm, we're just gonna go ahead and slide it back onto the hub. Now, if you remember, I told you there's a spring down here. 
that hooks into the handbrake arm. So all you gotta do is get it under the spring, push the spring back and hook it onto that nut. Just like so. And then this guy is gonna go ahead and sit up here for now. First thing we're actually gonna do is toss in our hold down clips. So this guy just goes up here. Remember our little pin slides in through the back like so, take some finagling. And that guy passes through this hole where our retention clip now slides over and through the slot. We go ahead and compress the clip and rotate it about 90 degrees so it gets held in there nicely. Then same for the other side. I'm actually gonna pull out the other components. That way they don't jingle around while I'm trying to get this in. And there we go. Now we have our hold down clips in. So next up, I'm gonna go ahead and slide in our adjustment rod. So that guy goes in here, something like this. So, and then we're gonna go ahead and slide on this lower spring. Like I was saying, I put in the rear shoe first and lock that in here. And then I put the front shoe on second and put the retention clip in there. And then I went ahead and put the adjuster arm. See if you can see the adjuster arm on. And then connected that with the spring back down to the bottom slot. And then I just slid in the actual adjustment crank on there. And then I will show you how to adjust that later. Remember we zeroed it out. So I will show you how to adjust that in a bit. So now up next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the lower screw, the lower spring that goes down here. And then we're gonna do the upper spring. So lower spring, it's a small little one. I'm just gonna hook it on to one shoe and then take our vice grip and grab onto the hook and pull on it and attach it to the other shoe. Alrighty, as you can see, our lower spring is now in there and seated onto both ends, both bottom ends of the brake shoes. So our main retention spring is going to go into this slot up here. And then the same on the other end, there's a similar triangle shaped slot over here. So that guy's just gonna stretch across. So we're gonna hook it in on one side over here, and then we're gonna use our vice grip to pull it over to the other side. So I was sitting here struggling to get these two shoes to get close enough together to extend the spring. And then I realized that the front side keyway of the auto adjustment bar actually doesn't fit onto the brake shoe flush. So there's a little slot here that the keyway is supposed to fit into, and normally, it slides all the way in and fits in like that. Now, if you take a look at our new pads, for whatever reason, the keyway here is much skinnier. So when I try to put this in, it bottoms out and doesn't go any farther. It should go all the way out to here. So I could do one of two things. I'm probably gonna sand out the inside of this keyway and also sand down the bar a little bit. That way it could slide in all the way and get flush and I could get that spring on there. Okay, wow, finally, after so much pulling and turning and twisting on this spring and grinding away at the little keyway for the brake shoe, I was finally able to get the main spring on. The next thing I need to do is throw in this arm, but this shouldn't be too bad. So it's just, it just slides into this hole here. This should touch up on the ratchet on the adjuster screw and then there's a little spring that pulls it down into this hole so yeah just to just to reiterate kind of what we did remember we slid on the new shoes pinned them in with our hold down clips slid in the bottom spring that just attaches to two holes here and then we grinded away at the keyhole for the self adjuster screw slid in the self adjuster screw that way i can push the brake pads together and be able to pull the main return spring onto each side of the pads. And then now we're gonna throw on the adjustment arm and the spring that goes with it. And then we should be all set to go. And we just have to adjust the standing position of the shoes. And I'll show you how to do that. So now that I have everything assembled, I threw on that adjustment arm now. The way that you actually want to adjust your brake pads 
is there is a little rotary dial in there right under the main retention spring. You can see it's right in there under the retention spring. So what you would do is you're actually gonna slide on your drum housing itself on top and you're gonna kind of mess with it until there is just a little bit of friction on the drum. Normally, this should be free spinning with the drum on it. You're just going to take it off, extend that screw and that's gonna widen the pads which will give you a little bit more tension on your drum. Once you have that tension set, then your rear drum brake pad maintenance is all done. Alrighty, and there you have it. Our new drum brakes and pads and new shoes are in there. New uh, outer drum is finally on. So the car should be able to stop now. Um, again, it's kind of a more complicated install, but as long as you keep track of what order the springs and the retainers go in, it shouldn't be too bad. You just kind of got to take it step by step. I know mine got a little bit confusing. I had to modify that self-adjustment screw a little bit so that it would slide onto the new shoes because the new shoes were slightly different than the OEM ones, but it's all set now. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm pretty tired. Hope this could help you out a little bit. If you have any questions, please let me know. Go ahead, drop a comment. If you guys are enjoying the how-to videos, be sure to leave a like. Hope you guys enjoyed. Plenty more content to come. This thing is almost ready. Pulled the trims off and everything, so it's almost ready to get out of here. So I hope you guys all have a great day. Appreciate everything. Easy on me, easy on three. One, two, three. Easy.